I'd like to call the May 12, 2011 meeting of the Williamsburg City Council to order. Would you call the roll, please, Ms. Walton? Ms. Newsom? Here. Mr. Pons? Here. Mayor Hallman? Here. Mr. Freiling? Here. Mr. Foster? Here. First order of business today is council minutes. We have minutes from the April 11, 2011, April 14, 2011 meetings, and the special meetings of April 29, 2011, and May 3, 2011. Do we have any additions or corrections? Mr. Mayor, I move that council approve the minutes from the April 11, 2001, April 14, 2001 meetings, and the special meetings of April 29th and May 3rd, 2011. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Knudsen? Aye. Mr. Pons? Aye. Mayor Hallman? Aye. Mr. Freiling? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. The next order of business is a matter of special privilege, and today we're pri privileged to have with us Kelly Cannon, the events director from for Run for the Dream. Kelly, would you come forward, please? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Hallman, members of council, Mr. Tuttle. Appreciate the opportunity to be here with you all today. I just wanted to speak briefly to tell you, thank you, first of all, for your permission and for all of your support on the inaugural Run for the Dream half marathon and 8K race weekend that's coming up next week here in Williamsburg. I'm the events director for An Achievable Dream, a school system for underprivileged children in the city of Newport News. We came to you all about two years ago with an idea to bring a world-class race to Williamsburg um, in partnership with the city, with Colonial Williamsburg, the college, um, Bush Gardens, and the Chamber of Commerce. And we're thrilled to say that eight days out, we have 4,200 people registered for this race. We're expecting them to bring 12,000 spectators to the city. Our population of runners includes about 20% of those are active duty service members. Um, an important part of our event is that it happens on Armed Forces Day. So we have 40 wounded warriors participating, 20 in our 8K and 20 in our half marathon. I think they're going to be a wonderful symbol of strength and perseverance for residents of the city and the visitors who come to town that weekend. Um, we have had the privilege of working with your wonderful public safety team, Major Barker, um, the fire department with Chief Dent here. They've just done an incredible job to make sure that our runners on the course are safe, that they're protected, um, and that we also don't impede vehicular traffic so much that we would um, disrupt any regular occurrences in the city during Armed Forces Day weekend. So I'm here to answer any questions for you. I've given copies of our brochure so that you can take a look at our race course. Um, I think that the big draw for this race and the reason why our inaugural event has been so successful is that we're showcasing all the best features of the greater Williamsburg area from running down Duke of Gloucester Street to a five mile stretch in the Colonial Parkway down to the James River and then finishing in the college's football stadium. It's going to be an exciting weekend. I hope that Williamsburg City residents will come out on the race course and cheer on for the runners. Join us for a post-race bash with Pierce's Barbecue in the Sunken Gardens at William & Mary after the race, and they can learn more information on the website, which is runforachievabledream.com. Thank you very much, Kelly. I, I think you have somebody important with you as well today. Would you like to introduce? I do. Our, um, the founder of Achievable Dream is Mr. Walter Siegeloff here. He's also the visionary who really came up with the idea of bringing this race to Williamsburg to showcase the region, and I'm glad he could be here with us, too. Walter, welcome. So, thank you. Um, well, Kelly, thank you. I know you guys have put a terrific amount of effort into this, and, and having talked with, with Jack and, and the staff, they, they've worked They've really enjoyed, I think, working with you and the professionalism that you've brought to, to this. And, and I, I know uh, they're, they're looking forward both to having it and to having it be over. <laughs> but but uh, again, I, I want to tell you how much the, the staff, has, what a terrific job they've done with this. And, and thank you and thank them for this. Um, Just to add that um, most people may not appreciate the uh, countless hours of work, the tremendous amount of organization, and the legions of volunteers that are necessary to pull off an event like this. So thanks to you and thanks to all those folks who are going to be out there race day uh, supporting the event, because, and particularly our uh, um, emergency response personnel, because without them, it just simply wouldn't be possible. Absolutely. We have over 150 volunteers from the Navy alone to provide additional course safety support as course marshals, and it's going to be great. Great. Thanks. Scott, thank you. Thank you. Look forward to it. Thank you. 
Just is this a, an, an annual, hope to be an annual event? Or? I hope so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Just thank you for doing it. It's wonderful. Thank you. Well, Kelly, again, hopefully you'll have weather like today. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and cooler. We yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, the runner here says a little bit cooler, but uh, it's early in the morning. That's why we so, early. But, um, but again, we wish you the best. And, and uh, again, uh, I, we appreciate the professionalism you all have brought to this. And, and I think the city looks forward to working with you in, in the future as this event becomes an annual event for us. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. And don't mind if I don't stay. I'm going to go stuff 6,000 runner swag bags. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Yep. Thank you. Our next order of business is public hearings. We have one today. This is a consideration of the franchise agreement agreement with Cox Communication and amending Williamsburg City Code regarding PEG fees, proposed ordinance 11 08. Uh, Jack or Chris will Chris, introduce okay, it. You're going to do that. Um, as Council may recall, last month Ms. Miller and I did a presentation to Council regarding our cable communications ordinance and some amendments that we suggested to that regarding the PEG fee and regarding um, um, con connectivity, the connectivity provisions within it. Um, and we are back with the uh, Cox franchise agreement that staff has been working with Cox on for Council's consideration as well as those changes to the city code to bring our code into compliance with the state code and consistent with the terms of this agreement. Um, the specific provisions are outlined in the memo that Council has. The state code requires that the City Council hold a public hearing on both issues um, and that has been duly advertised and is scheduled for today. Um, I also wanted to let Council know that Catherine Falk with Cox Communications is here in the event that Council has any questions for her. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you for being here today as well. Does anyone have questions for, for the staff before we begin the hearing? Just one question. Uh, for the folks who may not have seen the presentation before, uh, this franchise agreement if entered into is not in any way exclusive or unique to, I mean, the agreement's unique to Cox, but it doesn't exclude any other party from it does attempting not. to provide service in the city. No, it does not. Thank you. And any other questions before? Uh, hearing none, uh, let's go to the uh, uh, hearing, and, and I'll, I'll open the hearing and ask anyone who wishes to speak to the, to the matter to please come forward. If you do, please state your name and address. Seeing no rush on the podium, uh, I'll close the public hearing and come back to council for any uh, questions or discussion. Paul? Um, no questions. Just like to thank Ms. Shelton for her work. Uh, it sounds as though we've done as much as we can under the state code to provide the best situation for the residents in the community. Scott? Uh, just, well, a couple questions. Just out of curiosity, do you know, have any idea? Um, how much the increase in fees would total, you know, from, from all the service, uh, about the people that buy the service? Increase of an individual customer's fees? Well, I know that's pennies or, you know, 50 cents or Well, something. currently city residents don't pay PEG fees because when we negotiated the franchise with Warner, which is the predecessor to Cox, they made a one-time payment to the city for the purchase of the video equipment in lieu of the, the PEG fees. Okay. That's good. And the, the PEG fees go toward? Toward the communications equipment to broadcast these and other content on the PEG channels. So this meeting and, and other public meetings as That's well correct. as other content. Well, thank you. Any other? Judy, any questions? No, uh, no further questions. Um, I'll come to council for action or discussion. Mr. Mayor, I move that City Council approve and authorize the City Manager to execute the franchise agreement with Cox Communications Hampton Roads LLC as presented, and that City Council adopt proposed Ordinance 11 08, amending Section 9 6 of the City Code. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Newton? Aye. Mr. Pons? Aye. Mayor Hallman? Aye. Mr. Freiling? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Thank you. And again, uh, 
let's reiter reiterate the thanks to staff for all the work that went into this. These, these are not easy agreements to, to, to deal with, given all the, all the, the multiple layers of constraints you deal with. So thank, thank you all for that. The next order of business are reports. The first is the monthly financial statement. Uh, Jack, is there anything? No, I have nothing uh, in particular to point out. I, I, once again, we're running very, very close uh, to where we were last year, both on the revenue and spending side, and um, we're projecting that we'll, we will end the year uh, in positive territory. Great. Any questions for Jack? Okay. Uh, next is the monthly department operating reports. Uh, just one thing to point out, you'll notice in the human service section there are a good number of blanks in there, and that's simply because we're going back and we're, we're not satisfied with some of the numbers and the data that we were reporting. So uh, human services and IT are working on those formulas to try to get it right, so that's why you see uh, some gaps there. But uh, we hope with next month's report that will return to, to a Great. full report. And any questions on operating reports? I just wanted to yeah. just make a comment. Um, I don't know how many of you noticed, and it was also in the paper on page 91 under the police department report, is the notation that the city participated in the Take Back initiative to take back um, prescription drugs that people might have in their home and no longer need. And I just wanted to say what a wonderful thing that is. Um, we had experience out at Old Town Medical Center with people trying to give us their medications because they didn't know what to do with them and we couldn't take them it was illegal and so people are stuck with all of these medications in their homes that they can't use and i just think it's really a, a good service that the city and other jurisdictions have done to take it back and to build upon that as uh, mr zidane has let council know before one of the worst things you can do is flush these medications oh, down the toilet yeah. or down the yeah. drain because the potential for contamination of the water supply right. is significant right yeah, so this is a really valuable program. Thanks. And, and again, we, we appreciate staff participating in that. So thank you. Uh, next is city manager reports. We have two. The first is the Creative Economy Marketing Survey. Right. I'm going to ask uh, Michelle DeWitt if she will give this report. <clears throat> Michelle, we appreciate you being here. I know you, you have a major conference in town that you're juggling as well as this, so, so uh, I hope you're keeping all the balls in the air. Yes, we are. Luckily, I, there's a whole team helping with the conference, so they're back at the Williamsburg Lodge um, with the folks from all around the world yeah. at that conference, so yeah. thank you for recognizing and, that. Well, and, and th thank you for being taking the lead and assuring that that conference came here. And, it, and it, again, it is a cooperative effort with the city of Williamsburg, James City County, and York County to bring um, business retention professionals from around the world to, to a conference here. And Michelle uh, was a, the leader in that, and we really appreciate your efforts there. Thank you. Thank you for that recognition. And I will share with you, we've encouraged the, um, we planned the conference to end on a Friday so people would stay for the weekend, and many of them are doing that. Um, and everyone is absolutely thrilled um, with Williamsburg and the area. Many, as you know, have had been here as children or had been here on their honeymoon, and they're just astounded by how wonderful um, this place is. And so we're we're happy to show off. Show off. Thank you. <coughs> well, thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of Council, um, here today to talk about the next step in our arts district effort, our Creative Economy Initiative. And you'll recall it was a year ago in May 2010 that the task force on the um, creative economy finished its work and reported to you um, recommending some next steps. And, and the first ones of, one of that was to take advantage of the state code that allows us to create an arts district. And that's been accomplished. And I'm proud to say we already have um, three businesses who've qualified in, in the arts district. Um, one is the Century Art Gallery. They've moved, they have a satellite office there um, with their classroom space teaching um, visual arts skills to the community. Um, we have a dancer's boutique that, that is opened in the City Green project. And then we have one that's still under um, construction. They hope to open this month, but it's actually a bakery. They will be um, making bakery items on site and also selling coffee on site. They also have plans to expand that to floral arrangements and sales and also in a small antique shop. So all of those qualify as creative economy businesses and delighted to have them in the arts district. 
So now um, the first step's been accomplished. Um, another step that your task force recommended was to to bring Art Space back to do a quantitative survey of what creative businesses and artists need and are looking for. And what this will do is identify the demand that these artists and businesses have. You know, help us frame how we would market the Arts District, how we would um, identify opportunities within the Arts District to meet that demand. So that's where we are now. So um, the Arts Task Force um, <coughs> remains very excited about this. And we actually have um, five um, funding partners joining us in this effort if, if Council chooses to go forward. And so those include Chesapeake Bank, who is located in the Arts District, um, the College of William & Mary, Colonial Williamsburg, the Greater Williamsburg Chamber and Tourism Alliance, and we've had a fifth since the memo went out. Bush Gardens is also joining us. And all of that totals $21,000 towards the effort. And the plan is for the EDA to consider another $5,000 towards the effort at its May 25th meeting, which will bring us to 26000 which is more than half the cost of the survey. So they're all excited to be active participants in this survey. Um, and what the survey questions are, but also how the results are interpreted and come back. So we're delighted to have this community support. It's really a terrific example of public-private partnerships, um, not only within the city of Williamsburg, but in, in the greater Williamsburg region. Great. So with that, um, I'm happy to answer any questions that y'all may have. Well, thank you, Michelle. And it's, it's terrific to have five partners sort of uh, enthusiastic and, and as well as putting their money where their enthusiasm is to, to back this. I think that's that's really terrific. Um, I guess the first question I have for you is, uh, in addition to the survey and those results, what, what else do you anticipate sort of this study leading to? Sure. Um, what In art space is the, the noted expert nationally on this effort and of course we've spoken with many other cities who've worked with them on this survey process. This, the survey results become really critical in identifying um, based on demand, based on what your customers need and want, um, what you can attract to this area of the city and then what projects probably the private sector would undertake to meet that demand. So it could be um, live workspace where artists um, live and work in the same space and you know our zoning allows that in this district. It could be maybe they need commercial space of a certain sort based on the certain creative activity um, or just housing. So um, it, or a mixture of all of that and, and it will actually delve into what's in this actual district that, that meets those needs and work with the private sector on that as well. Thank you. Uh, Paul? Michelle, this might be a question more for somebody from art space, but how do, do you have any idea how they identify the uh, persons to fill out the survey, to complete it? Sure. The, one of the parameters is a 50-mile radius. So they are looking you know, regionally at who might come to this area. And we, we know we hope that radius is larger when we actually start marketing it. But, but to identify a demand that you can count on within a 50-mile radius. And then we would work with our partners on, um, and others in the community on identifying who to um, ask to complete the survey. So that would include Colonial Williamsburg employees, um, the faculty at William & Mary, the students at William & Mary, um, our, our, the, the employees at Bush Gardens, um, and also any other, any other um, employers who, who have that sort of creative class of, of employees. But then also our community arts organizations, because they really have a handle on who the artists are now. Um, and, and can reach out to them and then through their networks. I've learned that the okay. artist networks are, are quite good. Um, good. The, the word tends to spread very quickly, which is, which is handy, but we will do, be doing that direct um, reach out to them. Um, another groups that will be instrumental would be the young professionals. We have two of those groups, the young emerging professionals, also known as YEP, and the young professionals of Williamsburg, which is YPAL. And if someone is aware of this and they're not directly contacted by art space, there is a vehicle for them to participate in the survey? They want yes, to offer this is insight. a web-based survey. So we will also be asking our um, friends at the press to cover that as well. So there will be an opportunity to be reached that way if you aren't reached directly. And um, is there a, a, or can we think about 
a plan of communicating to the residents of the arts district well in advance that one that the surveys coming out they may want to participate as well but also to uh, communicate the results to them to just keep them as informed as possible throughout the process I think that's very important and we have already set up a listserv where they we've asked them to please sign up and they they receive any updates about the arts district we will definitely use that and I think we would think about whether based on our past experience a direct postcard mailing we haven't discussed that but I think based on our past experience that that might be a wise way to go and one last question have you had the opportunity to see the results or, and maybe they're proprietary but of any other art space demand surveys that they've done they are proprietary but I have um, been able to talk to um, a private developer in another city who was one of the first to use this survey to build like I said the private sector often is the one who does this and he built um, studio space and workspace he actually renovated an, an older um, school um, and then added some housing around it on a green field next to it and and I had a long conversation with him but I specifically asked him what what the survey's influence was and would he have done this without the survey and he said the survey was the the reason he did it because the private sector just doesn't do a good job and this, these were his words of quantifying that artistic space need so he said that was the the reason he went forward and um, and was was very successful the space is full well, oh, great. Well, I just want to congratulate you on bringing the partners into the equation. That is a significant step forward, not only related to the arts district, but for the entire community as we continue to look at new projects, uh, new initiatives. Uh, building those relationships and that trust is critically important. So thank you for doing that. And I'm sure it wasn't easy. Scott? Just to echo with Paul's last comment. You know, you, you've done the background work to make this a true community investment, and I think that's, in the end, what's going to make it successful. So, great job. Great job. Thank you. Scott? Oh. <laughs> Doug. Yes, Gene? Yes. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I would echo the sentiments about the partners and um, being involved in the, in the financial contribution to this. Um, uh, I would probably feel differently if it were just the city putting up the money, but mm -hmm. having the buy-in from the community um, with that amount of money and hopefully a little more from the EDA, um, I think it resonates uh, with me that this is a, a community project and one that, that a lot of people are, are interested in, in seeing happen. Um, I also want to, I think it's, it's commendable that we've, we've looked to an outside agency to come in and, and help us with this product project you know all too often we, we look internally sometimes and I and I think that that hampers us um, and so reaching out to a, a people or an organizations outside of our community is a helpful thing so I, I support it hearing uh, any any further comments or questions oh, I think. I, I am totally supportive of this, and I think, uh, and again, I'll, I'll echo the, the terrific job that Michelle has done from the very beginning with this. Um, you know, it, it's, it's been, at times, I'm sure it seemed like a long slog to get here, but it's, it's really been terrific, and you, you have been a, a major part of this. So, thank you for shepherding the group and and, uh, and, and the various phases that we're going through. So, thank you for your efforts. And, may I and Oh, go ahead. Well, I wanted to mention one. That I, I'm sorry I didn't mention this sooner, but y'all have seen it in the memo for those watching at home and those in the audience. Um, the time frame of the survey, we do want to wait until the fall to launch the survey because we, we think the William Mary faculty and students are an important um, constituent to receive the survey. So just to let you know, it, it won't be until the fall that we hit the street early fall with the, the survey. And just for point of clarification on the motion, uh, it says that the city to uh, authorize the city manager to contract with art space for any amount of forty two thousand five hundred dollars and that is then counting on the partners to reimburse the city so even though the city's outlaying that money up front right they if will you'd like to put have that in the motion for clarity that's fine <clears throat> mr. mayor <laughs> I move that city council authorize the city manager to contract with Art Space to complete an artist marketing survey for the city of Williamsburg at the cost of forty-two thousand five hundred dollars, and twenty-one thousand dollars of that amount will be reimbursed to the city by its partners. Second. 
I have a motion and a second. Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Newsom? Aye. Mr. Pond? Aye. Mayor Hallman? Aye. Mr. Freiling? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Great. Thank you. And thank you again, Michelle. Oh, Michelle, I, I didn't count the EDA in there yet, but we're <laughs> counting on you. <laughs> 21,000 plus. Right. <laughs> 21,000 plus. So. Our next uh, report is on the Blayton Site Housing Project HUD 202 application, and this is proposed resolution 11 04. Ms. Miller. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council. As discussed at the March meeting, the City of Williamsburg, the Re Williamsburg Redevelopment and Housing Authority, the Peninsula Agency on Aging, and Chesapeake Bay Housing, an affiliate of Bay Aging, are working together to provide additional affordable elderly housing on the Blayton property, which is right next door. With the endorsement by the city, the Peninsula Agency on Aging and the Chesapeake Bay Housing will submit a grant application to the U.S. Department of Housing and Ur Urban Development, HUD, Section 202 Supportive Housing for Elderly Program in the amount of $4,245,468 to construct 38 new units of multi multifamily units for very low income elderly. The deadline for the application is June 1st. HUD 202 funding is one of the four major funding sources for this project. As we've identified, the others include CDBG, which we submitted our application in March, the city's contribution, as well as a contribution from the Williamsburg Redevelopment and Housing Authority. Our recommendation is that City Council approve proposed resolution 11-04, endorsing the HUD 202 application submitted by the Peninsula Agency on Aging and Chesapeake Bay Housing to build and operate the 38-unit multifamily housing unit for very low-income elderly citizens. Thank you very much. And <clears throat> let me clear, th this is a necessary part of the application is to have City Council take this action. Is yes, it's a requirement to have the City Council as well as the Housing Authority submit a resolution in support of the application. If you recall, this is the one funding source which the, house, the Housing Authority or the City are not eligible to apply for. It has to be a nonprofit group that provides housing. So our partners, um, Peninsula Agency and Aging and Chesapeake Bay Housing with Bay Aging will be submitting the application, application. for us. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, any questions? Just one question. Since our last conversation on this topic, have you had uh, any additional uh, related communications with either residents of the Blayton Building or the surrounding neighborhoods, particularly Christmas Attics, about um, any questions, concerns uh, related to moving forward? Uh, we have not had a formal public meeting, but we're actually still in the process of gathering information and sharing information with residents, particularly the Blayton Building, as we continue to put the application together. So um, an important next step is after the application is submitted, and once we um, find out whether we've been awarded funding, is to continue our neighborhood meetings and talk about what that means, next steps, timelines, and those kinds of things. Thank you. Yeah. Scott? Do we have any sort of forecast on our likelihood to secure this funding? I mean, it's very competitive. So um, in years past, um, Virginia had its own pool of 202 money in which you competed with other Virginia localities. They've expanded that now, so we're now um, competing with the D.C. and Baltimore area. Um, that's, that's good, and that means there's more money available. It's bad in that it means more competitions out there. Um, it's a very competitive grant process, so um, all we can do is put forth the best application we can, and I feel like we've got a good team that's been able to do that to this point and keep our fingers crossed. Good deal. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Doug? Yeah, just, I, I, obviously, I think it's a you know, worthy cause, and we, we should move forward with it, but just out of curiosity, are there any other projects on the peninsula like this moving forward, any, but any other municipalities? Not that we're aware of. Not that we're aware of that are, they're looking to submit for this type of project. We've kind of kept our eyes and ears open to find out, but we're not aware of, of any in, at this point. But that's not to say someplace else in the state right. that they're working a similar application. It just strikes me, you know, I think we're all, Williamsburg is very proactive in, in seeing to the needs of those that, that need it the most, and uh, so I think we all should be commended for making these efforts. Well, and it may also, timing may work. To our yeah. advantage, yeah. to some degree, if the climate is not uh, well suited for other uh, localities, municipalities to try to uh, do this kind of project. Um, so, and this money may not be available in the future, too, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. This is definitely a window of opportunity. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes. Judy. Um, just to answer Mr. Filing's question, at least the Housing Authority has not heard from anyone at any of our meetings or any of our communications from residents or Christmas Atticus or anybody. So 
as far as I know. It seemed that the feedback we received previously yeah. was positive, so I just right. wanted to make sure yeah. that was yeah. still the sense. Yeah. Any, any other questions for, I think we've moved to action. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move that the City Council approve Pro's Resolution 11-04, endorsing the HUD 202 application submitted by the Peninsula Agency on Aging in Chesapeake Bay Housing to build and operate a 38 multifamily housing project for very low-income elderly citizens. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Knudsen? Aye. Mr. Pond? Aye. Mayor Hallman? Aye. Mr. Freiling? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Jody, thank, thank you for all your work on this, and please convey our thanks to the Housing Authority for their efforts as well. I know this has uh, taken a lot of your time and a lot of their time, but I think, as, as, as Doug said, this is a, a worthy project for our community, and, and uh, the elderly and disabled in our community deserve this project. So thank you very much for that. More to come. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Thanks. Uh, next is City Attorney Reports. Do we... I wanted to bring um, council update council on one matter. Um, the council may have noticed an advertisement in the paper, a legal notice that was posted um, about the Voting Rights Act preclearance exemption. Um, the staff has met with the Department of Justice, um, provided them with documentation regarding the application for exemption. Um, I would remind council that all the application that this all this application the city is going to file with the federal court in Washington D.C. does is exempt the city from the preclearance requirements under the Voting Rights Act. It in no way means that the Voting Rights Act is not applicable to the city of Williamsburg or that we are not obligated under its terms. It just simply means that when we do something like change a precinct boundary, we don't have to submit that to DOJ before we can proceed. So that's all this does. There's a notice in the paper. The city attorney's telephone number is in that notice. If anyone has any questions, they can contact the city attorney's office and we'll explain what this process is, what it does, and what it doesn't do. Great. Thank you. Any, any questions for Chris on this? Okay. Th thank you very much. Uh, our next order of business is budget adoption, and we have two items here. One is the budget for the fiscal year commencing July 1 2011 which is proposed re resolution 1103 um, and proposed water rates of four dollars and thirty cents per thousand gallons proposed ordinance 11-06 um, i believe we can have a discussion of those together but that they need to be uh, offered as separate resolutions okay mr city manager well let me say uh, today we come to the end of a long process uh, that that truly began a year ago when uh, Mr. Foster and Mr. Pons elected to city council. The new council took its seats July 1, and immediately you began talking about your priorities and goals for the coming two years. And that went throughout the fall and culminated in the adoption of the biennial goals, initiatives, and outcomes document. When followed by the state of the city message and right after that in November the staff begins working very diligently on the budget for the year beginning uh, July 1 coming up uh, you began your work on it directly in February with a retreat on financial manners and began to get a preview of what the staff was seeing at that time both on the revenue side and the spending side discussed any number of the uh, critical uh, budget issues coming up and then on March the 18th, the proposed budget was uh, released, and you had your work sessions uh, that were conducted this year down at uh, Quarter Path in two, two evenings, uh, reviewing uh, outside agency and other issues in the budget. And then in uh, February, I'm sorry, in April, we had the public hearing uh, in, in this room a month ago. And so now we've come to the point of, of adoption of the budget. Uh, before you is the budget resolution, which has three attachments, three uh, exhibits. Uh, the first being that which adopts the operating budgets themselves in the areas of the general fund, the utility budgets, and the, um, the budget for the, the human services functions. There's also the next exhibit deals with the tax of taxes for next year, which are unchanged from the current year, and the third with the, the uh, capital improvements program uh, for the city next year. 
Uh, finally, as, as the mayor mentioned, uh, we have uh, a recommendation as part of the budget, and included in the budget is a water rate increase of 2.5% uh, from $4.20 to $4.30. And so uh, that is uh, proposed ordinance 1106. So with that as introduction, be happy to answer any questions at this point and turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, let, let me start with a couple questions for, for you, Jack. Um, you know, th this year um, we've, we we always present a balanced budget. Uh, typically, that balancing of the budget occurs with either a transfer to surplus or a transfer from surplus. So, what tell tell me a little bit about the history of of, of that, and and then secondly, sort of how do the the actual transfers compare to what was predicted in the budget, say, over the last 10 years? Right. Uh, the, uh, the city every year comes in with a budget which is balanced in revenues and expenditures, of course. Uh, typically what we have done, and it's true again in, in, in the budget for the, the year that's coming up, is there is a, uh, on the operating side, some amount of reserves brought forward. To, to balance uh, revenue with spending. In effect, we're using some money, in, in the case of this budget, $147,000 out of a $32 million operating budget that is showing essentially using sa savings to, to, to bring the budget into balance. Um, and uh, that, is, that uh, amount is typical in past years. We have had reserves brought forward anywhere from zero up to perhaps $300,000. Uh, that the range has been that wide, and uh, then we compare that to what we do at the when when finally you reach the end of the year and compare that budget with uh, the actual perform performing results for that year. We know that in every year for the last 20 years, we have the city has had an operating surplus. Now, those surpluses have been as high as 3.3 million dollars and as low as $200,000. And in fact, those occurred in years back to back when we went into the recession. But importantly, even when the recession hit us and, and revenues were um, um, uh, impacted immediately, the, the city was able to end that year in a positive position. So we've never had a situation when we've actually had to use any of those reserves brought forward at, at the end of the year, but it's typically been uh, shown as uh, as part of the balanced budget. Great, thank you very much. Paul, do you have questions? Uh, no, sir. Scott? Anything? I don't have any questions. Any, any comments? Um, well, my, my, yeah, I have a couple comments, I think. The um, uh, you know, I think the, the budget that's been presented, um, you know, is, is clearly a reflection of, of of the discussion that we've had over the last year, and um, it's a very safe budget. Um, um, you know, I, I feel very proud that if approved this budget, um, you know, that the expenses are going to be held in line. And I think, as I mentioned last month, uh, you know, staff, I think, um, takes very personally, um, you know, the, the city business and making sure that that monies are spent and appropriated correctly. I guess the challenge that I still have, um, as I've mentioned in, in all the previous meetings, is, is on the revenue side. And I think, um, um, not staff, but what council hasn't done um, is recognize the new realities of, of what, what's coming in the future, um, particularly with our, our primary economic engine, uh, which I think uh, needs, needs an overhaul. Um, Now, having said that, I think what I what, and what I mean by that is I think when we make investments in um, in in our in our economic engine of tourism, I think we need to to do so um, with an open mind moving forward. Um, that to do things the same old way every year um, is just not going to get us through troubled times in the future. So. I, um, uh, so that that would be my only concern is that we haven't really faced the realities of, of the challenge of revenue moving forward. Um, and just looking at the um, and appreciate your comments, uh, Mr. City Manager, about 
about the the movement of, of, of monies back and forth to reserve. Uh, but just the the shortfall in in, in the CIP and the fund transfer of five hundred some thousand dollars, um, understanding how that works, um, could be made up very easily with a with a. A significant, not a significant, but just a minor bump in in tourism. Um, you know, fifty thousand families traveling to Williamsburg, it's spending fifteen hundred dollars could could generate uh, you know seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in sales tax just in the one percent, um, and that says nothing about the five percent. So there's great opportunity there, um, and I and I think we're missing the boat on looking at tourism as, as economic development uh, projects. And, and a few of us were at an event yesterday where, where the lieutenant governor had mentioned um, that up until recently the state didn't even look at tourism as economic development. And I think that's, that's true in the city. Our, our economic development, um, our team really don't focus on, on that, um, on, on tourism. Um, so I, I think as we move forward, we need to rethink how we how we how we deal with tourism and, and uh, make it more of a, a priority. Thank you. Any further comments? Jenny? Yeah. Uh, I, I first when we before it was explained uh, wasn't crazy about the water rate increase, but as Mr. Tuttle explained it to me, you know, we're building in money for expenses we know are coming. You know, there's constant, constant improvement to be made, uh, retooling and whatnot, and what what is handed down from the EPA is yet to be known. So, uh, it's it, it is it is a justified, justified move. Jack, would you maybe expand on that a little bit and talk about sort of uh, this is not the first water rate increase we have. We've been right. doing this, and and it goes back to in part the agreement with Newport News, but there are also other factors. So would, would you maybe expand a little bit on sort of the, the, the three elements that are going into driving this water rate? And then if you would also give us a sense of how the city's water rate, which includes sewers, compare to water sewer rates in, in other jurisdictions right. on the peninsula. Well, first of all, the, the first obligation of the, the water uh, rate is to support the operations of the, the water department to keep the water flowing uh, out and treated out of Waller Mill and um, uh, throughout the distribution system. And also, we don't have a separate uh, sanitary sewer charge. Uh, HRSD does, Sanitation District does, but not the city. So our water rates cover that expense as well in terms of the whole uh, the pumping and collection system to, to uh, deal with uh, sanitary sewer with wastewater. So that's the first thing. We have to make uh, take care of those operations. Now, the operating costs of our system have been level in the last few years. That's good. But the revenue growth due to new business has also been level. And in fact, these years have been years when both uh, through, um, through conservation, which is a good thing, and through uh, just the effects of, of decades of water-saving devices being installed in new projects as they've come along, the, 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 the impact of both recession and conservation means that, that our water rates are not growing by themselves. Actually, they're shrinking slightly. So um, the and, – and yet that's sufficient to maintain operations. We're pretty comfortable with our rates to main, uh, maintain operations. But, Mr. Mayor, as you were alluding to, there, there are two other things that we face. One, the city entered into a $12.5 million agreement with Newport News that buys us long-term water security, where when Waller Mill, in times of uh, severe drought, as has happened in the past and will happen again, is inadequate to provide the needs of the city. And, and that agreement was uh, settled a year ago, uh, funded a little over a year ago, funded and then refunded with the bond issue uh, last fall. But that has to be paid for over many years. So that needs to be factored into our rates. And the, and the other is we, as all jurisdictions in Hampton Roads, are under a consent order from uh, the uh, federal government and the state which says that improvements must continue to be made in the sanitary sewer system to limit uh, storm water and any other source of water from flowing into that sanitary sewer system during rain events and other things. That's the inflow, inflow and infiltration issue. 
So um, continually to um, televise, document where those uh, incursions are into our system and to repair them is an ongoing requirement, costing the city uh, in, uh, projected in our, in our uh, CIP about a half a million dollars a year going to that ongoing effort of constant improvement to the system. So what, all, what that means is that we need to have a rate structure there that can support that activity, water security and environmental uh, concerns. Now, in terms of the comparison, uh, the city is and continues to be and has been for actually decades in an enviable, enviable position vis-a-vis -vis other water providers and utilities in the area. So um, currently we're at... Um, Four dollars uh, and twenty cents per thousand gallons. It goes up ten cents in this budget. The just by comparison, Virginia Beach is at six dollars per thousand, and this is water and sewer combined. Uh, Chesapeake ten dollars and ninety cents per thousand. Norfolk nine dollars thirty five cents per thousand. Closer to home, James City County a Service Authority five dollars sixty five cents. Newport News six dollars and sixty seven cents. So in that context, our four twenty. It looks pretty good. Um, and so thankfully, we've got some room to grow and still uh, remain our position of the lowest utility rates anywhere in the Hampton Roads. Right. Thank you. Any, any? Just, a, um, just a comment uh, uh, related to Mr. Pond's comments. Um, I, I don't, I wouldn't say that the city hasn't viewed tourism as a priority, and if, I, if I'm Misquoting you, I apologize for that. Uh, I, I, but I think it's fair to say there are some questions we should be asking about are the things that we are doing the best possible actions that we can undertake? Are we using the revenues that we get through tourism? Are we reinvesting them in the absolute best possible way? Um, those are fair questions, and those are things that, that we do need to talk about. As is the point about is tourism economic development? In the, I think the, the model generally accepted, tourism is considered separate from economic development. Yet in this community, tourism is a huge part of our economic engine. So I think th those are all reasonable questions and things that we should and hopefully will discuss coming up over the summer and um, come to the best possible conclusion that we can. There's always room to strive for improvement, and I, I wouldn't suggest that we have uh, we can't improve because uh, I, I think that's a, a poor approach. But I do think it's fair to say that we, the city has viewed tourism as a, a key component of its revenue stream, a key component of um, the economy, employment, and a key component of, of who we are. And uh, I, think, I think a lot of what Council has done over the past many years, long before I was serving here, in reinvesting in tourism is somewhat a reflection of that. So I'm not trying to be disagreeable, but I just think... I think we said the same thing. Yeah. I, I, I think the city takes a... a a proactive role, um, but what I see in this budget is us doing the same thing that we've done over the last 20 years, and the marketplace is decidedly different, um, and I think it's time for us in the future to ask those questions and, and resolve those questions. That we, we all would agree with that. Um, um, so, But I think, that, I think the point that we shouldn't <clears throat> lose is the uh, economic development, tourism, distinction, separation, but with inevitable crossover. So how do, how do we resolve that from a, a staff resource standpoint from uh, primarily? And, and I'm confident that we're going to look at this uh, as we move forward. One other comment I'd like to make, um, sorry, just to, again, thank staff. You know, it's remarkable the job that's been done, particularly over the past, I guess, uh, four years, when you look at what has happened with revenues and what has been able to be accomplished in, co in partnership with the community. Um, residents have been cooperative and made adjustments. City staff has been incredible in the way they've responded. Uh, the, the willingness to continue to work several years without pay increases and continually doing more with less. Um, thankfully, thankfully, we're able to do a little bit more for them this year, but um, it's, it's not just on the budget preparation, which is key, but it's in the day-to-day -day actions that support that budget and make what's on paper a reality for the citizens of this community. Thank you. Um, back, back to your, your earlier point and, and Doug's point as well, is I think it's, it's not only incumbent upon us to ask the right questions, 
but as we ask those questions, we also have to critically consider what, what are the options for dealing with the answers to those questions, and that means that we have to have the ability to, to look at alternative ways of dealing with, with, with uh, um, you know, whatever issue we want to think about and have a, criti you know, a critical discussion of what are the pros and cons of those different options. And to this point, um, I, th I think we, we need to do two things. One, determine what, what the right questions are and then think about what are, think critically about what are the, the, the options that can lead us to, to, to dealing with the, the uh, issues that those questions bring up. And I think it's incumbent upon us to do those as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will also echo the, echo the Vice Mayor in, in our thanks. I think all of Council will agree with this, the thanks to, to all the staff for the hard work they've done in moving this budget to this point because it's, it's not easy. I know Phil has probably gone through several sharp pencils as he's gotten here. And thank you for your uh, uh, excellent forecasting techniques and, and, and refinement of those techniques as we go forward. But I think up and down th through the departments that everybody has participated in this. And, and it is what I think is one of the real strengths of this city is that the city staff operates as a team. And this is the perfect example of how we operate as a team. And thank you, Jack. And thank you, all, Phil. And thank you, all the department heads. And thank all the employees for, for working on this because it it's, happens every year and it's a, it's a grind, but thank you very much. We have two proposals that need action. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move the approval of Resolution 11-03, Adoption of the Budget for Fiscal Year 2012. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Do we need to include the schedules in that? There. Part it's, of, all, okay. it's already part of it. I have a motion and a second. Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Newton? Aye. Mr. Pond? No. Mayor Hallman? Aye. Mr. Freiling? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. We have a second action on proposed water rates. Do I have a motion? Mr. Mayor, I'll move the approval of Ordinance 11 06, uh, changing the water rate from $4.20 to $4.30 for per 1,000 gallons. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Newton? Aye. Mr. Pond? Aye. Mayor Hellman? Aye. Mr. Filing? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. That brings us to our pen, uh, our seventh budget, our seventh agenda item. Budget's on my mind. Uh, unfinished business. This is city council meeting times. We had a discussion about this at our work session. We looked at uh, the, the data over the last six months as we had moved the uh, Monday work session till to 7 p.m. And I think uh, uh, we had a brief discussion of that on Monday, but uh, it's now on the agenda for further discussion and, and potential action. So I'll reiterate what I said in the, at the, uh, the work session. I, we gave it a good try. The numbers aren't there. Uh, I'm perfectly okay with going back to 4 o'clock. Like I said, I probably like this more than anybody, and I still don't like it very much. <laughs> okay. And any other comments, discussion? I agree with Mr. Foster. Do we have a, a motion? Do we need a motion? Do we need a motion? Yeah, we do. Okay. According to the city attorney, we do. Mr. Mayor, I move we move the meeting time back to 4 o'clock. This is for the Monday work for session. The Monday work session. To 4 p.m. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Newton? Aye. Mr. Pond? Aye. Mayor Hallman? Aye. Mr. Freiling? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Our penultimate budget item is new business. And, well, just for clarification, yes. this will begin with the June meeting? Uh, yes. Okay. June. Okay. New business. First is appointments to boards and commissions. Mr. Mayor, I move that effective July 1, 2011, City Council reappoint Peter Wallentish to Colonial Behavioral Health for a two-year term to expire June 30, 2013, Monty Mason and Edward Richardson to the Economic Development Authority for four-year terms to expire June 30, 2015, Sarah Hoagland to the Library Board 
for a four-year term to expire June 30, 2015. James Ramage to the Social Services Advisory Board for a four-year term to expire June 30, 2015. David Watson to the Williamsburg Redevelopment and Housing Authority for a four-year term to expire June 30, 2015. And also effective July 1, 2011, I move that City Council appoint Leslie Skinner to the Williamsburg Area Arts Commission for a three-year term to expire June 30, 2014 and Sharon Marcellia to the Williamsburg Redevelopment and Housing Authority for a four-year term to expire June 30, 2015. Effectively, immediate, effective immediately, I move that Council appoint Susan Bruno to the Colonial Community Criminal Justice Board for a term to expire June 30, 2013. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Newton? Aye. Mr. Pond? Aye. Mayor Holman? Aye. Mr. Freiland? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Our Mr. Mayor, if I may, I have a your second, second motion. motion. Yes, sir. I move that City Council adopt Resolution 11-02, a recommendation to the Circuit Court Judge for the reappointment of the following persons to the Board of Equalization for one-year terms to expire June 30, 2012. David Hertzler II, Barbara Baganakis, Jack Marston, Sharon Baker, and Tex Turner. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Newton? Aye. Mr. Pons? Aye. Mayor Hallman? Aye. Mr. Freiling? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. I'm Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, our final agenda item for the day is open forum. This is a time when anyone who wishes to address council on any matter may do so. If you wish to address council, please come forward, and I would ask you to state your name and address. Welcome, Mr. Whitley. Mr. Mayor, Council Members, I'm John Whitley, 110 Governor Berkeley Road in our great city. I have uh, one announcement to make, hoping that you and those who are out there in TV land and in the audience will take advantage of this. And by the way, through this announcement, I'm speaking as the co-chair of the Williamsburg Democratic Committee. On May the 23rd in this chamber or elsewhere where refreshments might be available, we will be having William Barlow to come forward and give us a recap of the previous session of the, the legislature. Unbeknownst to him, but it will be now, uh, part of that event will be to celebrate his service to our city. So if you can and if you will, please join us at 7 o'clock on May the 23rd. That is a Monday. Another item, and I don't know which hat I wear, probably just citizen with this. Uh, I heard the discussion about tourism and its being or not being an economic development proposition. Definitely the hospitality industry is an economic development proposition. Likewise is education. Education is an economic development proposition. What I was feeling, or maybe I was just thinking it on my own, is that as you are looking, as, as we look as a city at where we are with these two pieces as I'm bringing hospitality and education to the fore, is that we look at not only who they are as, what they are as economic development propositions, but how we invest the, the revenue of the city into each of those, making certain that whatever the, the things we've done in the past, are they delivering the best result for our citizens, for our community, and to be certain that we answer that. Or as Stephen Covey would tell, advise us to do, start where you want to be and work backward. Decide what, what we really want to see from the perspective of hospitality industry, the education venture, and make certain that we, that we are not fearful of making new and creative decisions about this, and maybe even a couple of temporary enemies. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Whitley. Anybody else wish to address, address the city on any matter? Yes. Hi, my name is General Exo. I live at 127 Banneker Drive, Williamsburg, Virginia. Uh, the last time I came, I spoke to you guys about the T-shirts. Um, actually, I had some made. 
Um, I'm still going through the process of trying to find out exactly how to go about doing things. Um, I talked to some members of the SCORE. Uh, they advised me to talk to um, Mrs. Michelle DeWitt. I sent you an email. I don't know. Okay. And um, continuing with the process. Uh, I have some shirts. I don't know if you guys would like one. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to give it me now. <laughs> I What size did you get, Mr. Barnes? Two <laughs> XL. I think that might be too big. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> you can grow into it. <laughs> yeah, I have no problem doing that. Either. How about a white marsh? That's sure. This is fine. Thanks. Appreciate it. This is a large as well. So, um, economic development, I, the tourism thing. I'm still there. Uh, I've been wearing my shirts for a couple of couple of weeks now, and people are like, they're asking me where can I get the shirts. I haven't sold any, but I just got them as far as a um, presentation. I wanted to walk around and see if people actually would like the idea. Uh, Bush Gardens, you know, I've been all over the place, and I've, the responses that I'm getting from people are, you know, it's kind of they're like, wow, you know, we didn't know. Um, I've done a lot of studying on the subject of Williamsburg. I've been here for a while, and I sent Mrs. DeWitt a letter to uh, try to find out more information about how to get the, the uses of the city seal. Um, the shirt is it's rather plain right now. It's, it's nice, but what I wanted to try to do was get, you know, uh, for the rec league, they have the shirts, and they have the city seal on the shirts. It makes the shirt official. It would make the shirt more of city property. And when people see the seal, they go, oh, so it must be a city thing instead of it's just me selling shirts. I don't want it to be just me selling shirts. I want it to be the city. So when people see it, they go, oh, that's a nice logo. That's a nice design. The city's putting out an image now where it's a little bit, I don't want to say fresher, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's a more updated look as far as Williamsburg is concerned. A lot of people, when they come, they say, I said the same thing the last time. They, they're like, well, we don't really know where we are. And I've done a bunch of designs. I have a, a whole slew of designs as far as letting people know exactly where they are. And so far, like I said before, I've been trying to get all the avenues. I've been kind of slow. Not slow, but it's been a, a process because I don't know exactly who to talk to. I don't know how to go about the process at all. You know, I'm... Uh, the last time I was here, you guys said uh, business proposal. I talked to some members at the score. They told me not to write a business proposal because it's like 30 pages. They told me to talk to Mrs. DeWitt first and see what she has to say and then go from there. So a month later, I'm still here. I'm still going at it. I just want you guys to know. I do have some female shirts. Would you like one? Sure. Black or white? Oh, black. <laughs> Medium or large? Large. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Again, I, I think you, you uh, after this meeting, I hope you'll speak further with uh, Michelle DeWitt and also uh, any licensing would have to go through the city manager's office. So, but I think they'll stand ready to to provide whatever assistance you need or, or information you need as, as you move forward. But thank you very much for coming to us today. And again, I think we all wish you well in this, this endeavor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak to City Council on any matter? If not, uh, I think... Ask yeah. Mr. Witt to make sure we have... I think we have another candidate for completing the Arts District Demand <laughs> Survey. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right, exactly. Good. Any any other matter to come before City Council today? If not? Mr. Mayor, I move to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second. Would you call the roll, please? Aye. Aye. Mayor Holland. Aye. Mr. Byland. Aye. Mr. Foster. Aye. Aye.